fitness and skill shoulder stability. So no much experience with that. Yeah? <coughs> Sometimes difficult subjects. So I try things and just simplify it. Huh? Okay. Uh, skill shoulder dislocation and stability is uh, less common than anterior dislocation. Uh, but more commonly missed, and this is very important. 50% of traumatic steroid dislocation are missed in ER. And so this is very important. I'll show you later the case how it was missed. Uh, two to five percent of all unstable shoulder are posterior dislocated. So it's much less common than the anterior So the mechanism of trauma is as simple as that trauma, significant trauma, repetitive multiple trauma, or sometimes <laughs> indirect trauma by the effect of uh, muscle contraction as an electrical shock or a convulsion. So trauma, 50% of cases, these are presented to evaluation. And we have another group, repetitive stress micro trauma, which can lead to capsule leg condition, especially overhead at knees or weight. Okay. Now, what are types of serial instability or dislocation? We have acute, chronic or load dislocation, recurrent posterior dislocation, and the most common is recurrent posterior subluxation. So it's not front dislocation, but it's subluxation. So what are the pathologies? This is important because this will guide our treatment to treat the pathology. So either it's soft tissue, capsular or labrum, or combined capsular labrum lesion, or we have bone problem, bone lesion, like glenoid trend, or head sacs lesion, reverse head sacs, or misarticulocytic fracture. And diagnosis, we will not go for clinical and examination, I think we passed through this, but clinical is very important by history and physical examination that you can diagnose most of this instability. And in acute cases, especially you have to do through AP and lateral view X-ray of the shoulder. Lateral axillary is very important. Can show you the uh, posterior dislocation, not to miss it. Though it's sometimes difficult to make lateral axillary view in these patients. CT scan is also important because it can show us the extent of the bone defect and also the degree of retroversion of the you know, because this is one of the factors that can lead to your uh, instability. Here, X-ray, here the CT scan, and which can add uh, information about the degree or extent of the bone loss, not only on the human side, but also on the genome. And you see how there is the bone uh, defect. And MRI is important to show us the soft tissue. <laughs> rather than the form like the uh, punctures or reverse punctures, okay, and also through out of the What's the treatment options? So most of the time we start conservative treatment. If this fails, we go for surgical treatment. Uh, but conservative treatment prone to failure if there is a large osseous defect. So when there is a history of trauma with a large osseous defect, so conservative treatment is uh, expected to fail. So you may have lower threshold to operate with these patients. Surgical treatment. What are options for surgical treatment? Guided by the pathology, so if we have capsule, leg on uh, lesion, so we have to repair or to do capsule therapy. Uh, Subscapting releases or mid so that we uh, make this defect, not this, because this is massive, large defect, but we can be, make the reverse head sex lesion from intra-articular to extra-articular, so not to engage. So this is the plotting. Okay, and we have the bony procedure, either this to process transfer, if we have a uh, large um, reverse head sex, or sometime humeral head grafting, either this infection with grafting and fixation or adding aluminum. Like in this, 
this uh, more than 50% of the hip is lost, so the treatment here is allopathic. If you don't have the specificity to make up for arthroplasty, especially in older patients. Other bony procedure on the glenoid side, either bone block, posterior bone block, or osteochondral uh, drug, like this, or you may do a glenoid osteotomy in case of excessive retroversion of the glenoid. So this is a case, just to be more practical, I mean, let me show some cases. Uh, this is a case of 50 years old male patient who has presented to me two weeks after a missed posterior dislocation. He had convulsion at, uh, during sleep. Uh, and he presented two weeks. And here the X-ray, if you see here the X-ray, there is impaction, it's clear, and there is overlap. This is, this is the true AD view. There is overlap of the joint line. And here the normal AD view. Uh, in this case, what would you prefer to do? Which imaging? Yeah, Here's the patient, very limited in severe pain. Okay, and here the CT scan. If you see, it show impaction and it's locked dislocation. This is locked posterior dislocation. It was missed. So in each patient with convulsion or uh, electrical shock, if the patient has shoulder pain, please have no pressure to do CT scan because sometimes X-ray will not give you an information, show you a case where it was missing. <coughs> and here, the D, and if you see here, how much is the loss of the, <coughs> the articular surface? Well, we make this uh, from the articular uh, side, and perpendicular line, and divide it into parts. And you see, it's here less than 25% of the articular surface. So what to do? Treatment according to the <coughs> type of dislocation. So in this patient, we have a chronic uh, dislocation, sorry, still dislocation, which is low, but still two weeks. <coughs> so we have a chance to do close reduction. But if it's more than three weeks, you have to do open reduction. And now, if you decide to do close reduction, it should be, it's not like the anterior dislocation, it should be under general anesthesia with full relaxation, and you have to take your time. Otherwise, you may cause freak, freakage or fracture of the hip and change from this type of preserving the hip to other methods you may need in the arthroplasty. And if it's stable after reduction, you can mobilize and extend rotation for four to six weeks. And if it's unstable, you have to do something else. If the lesion is less than 25%, you can do an eclatement or subscaptic releases or its modification. If it's between 25 to 45 or 50 percent, you can do the subject transfer. And if it's more, then you may need allograft or any progress. So with the patient in front of, under anesthesia, it's locked. And if you see with external rotation, it's locked. And I took 15 minutes to reduce this. Very gentle, very slowly, with distraction rather than the patient. And here after the the reduction, and if you see, it's unstable with internal rotation. You see, now click, it's re dislocated. So I decide to do tenodesis, subscap, McLaughlin, and here you see here the open the subscap, here the defect, and then the repair. And after repair, this was very stable uh, in internal rotation. So here the patient, four weeks, we allowed him active. Motion. And if you see the X-ray here, it's the large defect of its concentric the head in the video. Here another case, which again missed. This is manual worker, and he was doing something on stairs, on uh, cylinder, and he had electrical shock and then falling down. We don't know what's the cause of the lead. It's the shock or the falling down. And he presented with, after one month, with this very severe painful motion of the shoulder. You see the X-ray, almost normal. Yeah, so it's deceiving. But again, electrical shock, we did for the CT scan, and you see how is the impaction of the humeral head. You see it really, you see, here it's more than 50, 25%. 
if the angle is 62, so it's about 62 from 180, so more than one third of the head. So in this case, what to do? This is the first transfer. Who would do that? This impaction for rotting and fixation for aluminum. Okay, I decide to do this of the transfer, and here you see the student from the university, and after that, here the defect. To keep the subscale attention, very important. Here the defect and uh, transfer the results to the defect and then fix by screws. Here is the hook, plus stable, and here the post office. With the patient, after eight months, he's smiling <laughs> after the operation. But you see here, he still has residual. Uh, indication of external and internal vision is very expected in this type of surgery. Okay, this is a case of the current posterior subluxation in a young male patient, 24 years old, who had first time dislocation after boxing. And after that, he uh, developed or uh, complained of recurrent posterior subluxation of the shoulder. But no proof dislocation, no X ray or imaging. Uh, done in ER uh, or the report document that it was dislocated. It's only patient description. In this case, uh, by examination, there was no against laxity, normal range of motion, power, but the posterior stress tests were painful and positive for pain and prevention. Here the MRI, <coughs> you see the posterior pancreas here, it's obvious. And now, What's treatment? Sure, in this case, arthroscopic treatment. And we'll go not, I'll not go through principles because Hassan showed very nicely uh, the technique, how to apply and uh, prepare. But here, what's important that you have to have good visualization. So you have to uh, use the superior lateral border so that you can see the minimal face. And here, if you see, here the labor there. And that was needed just to make sure of the orientation that this is the right part. And after that, you make the here, you make the port. After you make sure that your needle can access the uh, lesion. Okay. After that, probing near the lesion, you see it's deep and it's down about five to six o'clock, and six and eight hours. Make sure how the extent of the lesion, and then after that, using the formula is much easier. We are working on the posterior uh, shoulder. So here, one of the soft candles, rubber candles. It's this how to do the candles. That you refresh the bed, as I said, you have to do it in a good way that you have rough surface, fresh surface to enhance depth of healing. You can use the extras, and after that, if some areas do not reach by shape, you can smooth this. After that, we put anchors. So, as I showed us, the knotless anchor. Here, I'll show you knotted. Anchors. So the first step here is to put the anchor, and after that, we we'll go for suture passing. As I showed, indirect way of passing. I showed you here, direct way, so you can use clever hook or rhino, and you see here. You see that sometimes, uh, if you cannot reach the uh, suture, you bring the suture to the right using knot push. So we pass the suture here, and then after that, retrieve the suture through the cannula. On the same board, though? Uh, yeah, you have posterior and posterior. The non pusher on the same board, though? Yeah. You retrieve both suture. And then after that, you make long time. And here, very important, because which is one is the post? I don't know if you know which the post and which not. The post is the one you do traction. And this will decide where is the knot. 
So we use the outer one here as the post to make the knot outside the joint, not the inner. Okay. And this uh, also will show you in the workshop how to do the half hitches with alternating post, or how to lock the knot to have a secure knot. Okay. And after that, this is the third anchor we cut, and this we have the final construct. And you see here three anchors fixing well the leg. Now I have a question for you. This is the post of this is the posterior. This is the posterior lateral which we used where we bought the cannula. And this is the superior lateral pointer, the one used for the cannula for proper visualization. Feel the patient post off here around three months after the operation. So now I have a question for you. This is a diagnostic arthroscopy. Can anyone tell me where is the pathology? Just watch the video and tell me. Uh, in diagnostic arthroscopy, we have to see here the subscap, the interval, the biceps, or end scab, anterior pancreas, anterior platelet, the glenoid. This is the anterior platelet, the posterior platelet. Okay, and then we switch the direct the camera to the rotational cuff here, the bed. Here's the pair area. And after that, we check for, in all cases of instability, we check for hagial lesion. Okay? So, where is the lesion? Anyone? The inferior of the labrum. Inferior of the labrum. You see something abnormal. Okay. To make sure, you have to switch the scope to the superior lateral. And here you can see, is there any lesion here? Any vision? Here? Here, probing, yeah. So we have to do probing. This is the message that don't depend on just lock. And if you do probing here, you see it's torn. Yeah. It's very similar to him lesion where it's just innocent locking, but it's deeper uh, injury of the leg. Okay, so we have to probe it, and here you see the lesion. And the lesion is not only that, it's simply up. Okay? This is the medical that he had 32 years old, chronic left shoulder pain and post electrical shock again. And he did fell down after the shock. The persistence test was a for pain, a very conservative treatment. And here is the MRI. You see there is a very late onset. Okay. Uh, here, uh, Follow the same steps. We have to make sure of our portal that we have good access to the posterior labrum. And after that, we do dissection and mobilization of the labrum. Here you see where to extend the region. <coughs> so we have to do proper release, then refreshment, and after that, we uh, can fix using the animals. And in this case, we use not this. Now, by conclusion, shoulder instability is relatively, uh, sorry, shoulder instability is relatively common, but posterior instability is much less common. It's account only for 2 to 5 percent of all unstable shoulders. Recurrent posterior subluxation, subluxation is the most common type of posterior instability rather than prime dislocation. Competitive athletes, those weightlifters or overhead athletes, are more prone for this type of uh, instability. Treatment should be guided according to the pathology, capsule, labral, or chronic problem. Conservative, conservative treatment first, and if failed, do surgical treatment. And recent improvement in imaging and surgical techniques have minimized misdiagnosis and uh, aided in more effective treatment. Thank you. Any question regarding the... Yes, thank you.